The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. We have a special guest again today, Bob Badley. He's a local entrepreneur and engineer. Welcome back. Thanks. So why are you here? What are we working on? Well, uh, we've been playing with the Amazon Alexa lately. Oh, yeah. And we kind of went nuts with it and had all these ideas for great things that we could do. So we're going to try and see if we can do that. Right. So what we're going to do in today's episode and also a future episode, part two, is work on automating our shop with Alexa. We're going to target a few specific things. The first thing we're going to do is have Alexa talk over a UART, a Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, basically like a USB cable. So like if you want her to send a command down to your device while you're probing it, like send like a packet of data, mm -hmm. she could and she could also receive something back from it as well, right? Yeah. So we're going to use the Pi mm -hmm. and hook it up so that we can send data, like we can send a text to Alexa right? and it will process that text and send a command down to the Pi and the Pi will be connected to the UART, which will talk to whatever it is that we're trying to talk to. So the Pi will act as her hardware go-between in the physical shop. Yes. Got it. And then in a future episode, we're going to expand that and also use the Pi with the Ethernet port to send commands to things over the network, such as our oscilloscopes. Lots of cool stuff we can do, but we're going to start with the UART. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. In order to get all of this working, we're going to need to set up a Pi that can take in a JSON request right. and spit back a JSON response. Okay. And then a skill in Amazon that can send the request and handle the response. Right. Uh, so we'll need to have all these parts working simultaneously in order for anything to work at all. So where do we start? Well, we could start by creating a skill or we could start by setting up the Pi. Okay. Well, we're right in front of a computer. Why don't we do the skill stuff first? All right, so we'll need to log into our Amazon developer account. So I think that's just developer.amazon.com. So you're saying so I should make an account? Yeah, let's have an account for you. All right, I'm going to set up this account. Hey, look, it turns out you can just use your regular Amazon account to log into Amazon Web Developers. Oh, that's cool. All right, so let's go to the Alexa tab. Okay. Oh, there she is. Anyway, what we're looking at here is there are two different options. One is for the Alexa skills kit and mm -hmm. the other is the Alexa voice service. So the voice service is for if we were creating a device that acted like an Echo. Right, embedding her onto something. Right, so if we were to make a Raspberry Pi that had the um, Alexa service running on it, right. then we would have to go through Alexa voice service to set that up. But we're using an existing device and we just want to use the skills on the cloud. So yeah, I so we're going to create kit. a new skill. Yep. Skills kit. And there's nothing here but yet. I can look. I can earn money. Look at this. Oh boy. Add a new skill. I yeah. Assume. Add a new skill. So what we're looking at here is we can choose between a few different things, and the the first two are probably the most frequently used: the custom interaction model versus right. the smart home skill API. So the smart home skill API is a little more complicated because you have to do more setup for it. All right. But with the custom interaction model, the, the downside to that one is that you have to invoke it using your custom word. So the name uh, doesn't really matter what you put because you will never see this, but you could just do serial. How about UART control? Okay. So the invocation name, uh, there are a couple of ways that you can use it. So you could say, Alexa, ask the, the UART control to blah, blah, blah. Or you could say, Alexa, blah, 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 using UART control. Okay, so UART control is the word in the sentence that she's using. She's like, oh, I know what that word is. Now I know how to interpret the rest of the sentence based off that trigger point. Right. Got it. So let's see, UART. UART's kind of, that's kind of, I don't know. Is there something serial? What do you think's what, short and fast and distinct? I liked serial. Serial? Alexa, send hello world over serial. I guess something like that. Yeah. Okay, what's next? The rest of that doesn't matter for us. So we can save it All right. and move on to the interaction model. We can either write the interaction model in pure JSON or uh, we can just launch the skill builder, which will uh, 
It's Amazon's fancy way of letting us do it using buttons and widgets and I've heard clicking. the term JSON before. What does it mean? Oh, I don't know what it stands for. Wait, JavaScript object not notation. Yeah, JavaScript object notation. Well, just what does it do? Uh, it's, uh, do you remember XML? Yeah. It's way better than XML, but okay, it's pretty so much it's the same the thing. Okay, so it's the new XML. Yeah. All right. But for people who don't remember XML, it's a machine and human readable uh, way of formatting data. Okay. So what we're looking at here is there are three built-in intents that every skill needs to handle. Oh, I see. Yeah, Amazon cancel intent, help, and stop. Right. It is possible to have an interaction with Alexa that is, has back and forth. Right. And so if you need to, you can cancel that using those intents. All right. So those are the three default ones. So we need to add our own. Right. So we would click on add an intent. Okay. Oh, here we go. Hmm. And this is the keyword uh, that we're looking for. I mean, it's actually just the name. So it's really, again, it doesn't matter what you write here because that's not what people are going to be saying. It's mostly for us to remember. Okay. But let's just do send. Okay. So now we're entering sample utterances. Mm. So a sample utterance is something that the user might say. Oh, and this goes into the machine learning that builds up yeah. the analysis. Got it. Yeah. So what are slots? Okay. So a slot is like a variable. Okay. So instead of saying hello world, we really want it to be a variable. Ah. So there's two keywords and then the word that can change. Yeah, but you could have multiple slots in a skill. So for example, if you had a calendar skill, mm -hmm. then you would want a slot for the time, a slot for the date, and a slot for the subject. And Alexa would have a, a conversation with you until it had filled all of those slots. So for right. our UART stuff, we're going to want to know what it is that we send Mm -hmm. and maybe even what format we send it in, whether that's hex or an uh, ASCII string. Okay. So we're going to create a s two slots, one for the thing being sent right. and one for the type of data that it is. And are we going to type that in using some special characters? Yeah. Okay. So first we'll create the slot and then we'll enter in our utterances that use those variables. Oh yeah, I see intent slot over here on the right. Yeah. So okay. create a new slot and you could do type. Yeah, let's do type. Okay. Is type defining what kind of variable it is? Uh, that's just the name of the variable, like okay. X. All right, so we want type. What else do you want? And the, the stuff that we're sending. Uh, content? Sure. Next, let's enter in a sample utterance. And that's up here. So we might say send hello in text. Oh, I think so I see where this is going. Send. And then we're going to identify which one of those words are slots. Yeah. So replace where it says hello mm -hmm. with a bracket. Okay. And see, it's already asking you for a slot. So we would say content mm -hmm. in. Oh, and then slot type. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't type be format if it's going to be like hex? It, yeah. Yeah, I would like that better. Okay. You can just rename the type. You have renamed it. Yay. And now we can... I need to go back to my utterances. Okay, so send content. So send 300 as in format. Yes. That's probably how I'd say it. Like, so send hello world in string. Yes. Or in ASCII. Right. Cool. Yeah. So now we need to populate our slots with okay. the, the things that we expect it to, to get. Oh, so, so the slots are where variables can be. And then we have to say, what are the possible variables that could be in there? Yes. Got it. So for example, one, one thing that you can populate is like cities. How do I how do I how do I populate it? Uh, just click on it. Yeah, for format, we'll have to add a new slot type. Okay. And so it doesn't matter what you type in here. Oh. Just whatever. It's the the title for our definitions. Oh, there's gonna be sub things below it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then you can click on it. Okay. Yeah. And now here we would put in all the values that we expect. Okay. So like ASCII and text. ASCII. I wonder if I should spell that out like ASCII. Because if you, well, think about it. Like she's doing text to speech. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So how would ASCII like as, ASCII? Just you know, like ask like a key for your ass. Let's see if that works. I'm no, serious. Like if not. you type in ASCII, it's like. Well, uh, Alexa's pretty smart. Maybe she will get it. I don't right. know. Hex, binary, decimal. Think of anything else. String. Octal. <laughs> okay. So now we've populated the types of formats that. Alexa is listening for. Okay, so we've just we've defined there's formats, then there's format types, and then here's the list of format types. Mm -hmm. So these are the only things she would respond to in, the, in that context. 
Yeah, so uh, when, when, we say the when we say our command to Alexa, she's going to look for those words. If one of those words is said, then that slot will get filled with the thing that it identifies. This reminds me of one of those old text adventure games on the computers, you know? Yeah. Get rock. Right. Light lantern. So what we're trying to do is allow Alexa to take this long string of words that you may be saying uh, out of order. And give her as much information as possible to figure out our intent. Yeah, what goes where Got in it. this sentence to populate the JSON with the formatted uh, data. So about do we what need we to uh, do content next? Yeah, we'll need to do content. So content is a little weird because like, we can't just list out all of the possible things that someone could say. Right, we probably have to define how they could be said. Yes. <laughs> Tell so, me what to do. Okay, so for content, we're gonna do a different kind of data. We're actually gonna use one of Amazon's built-in ones uh, called the literal. So it should say amazon.literal. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Got it. So Amazon had some back and forth on this one. For a while, they were considering removing it as an option. Right. Um, but then they changed their mind. So it's actually still available available, but only in the United States. Like they decided just in the United States are we gonna allow the literal. I don't know why. This is important because this, is, uh, this allows us to say whatever we want and Alexa will just put that into the, the variable that we are looking for okay. and so there we go. All right, so how do we use Amazon literal? So basically it's just gonna take the word that we say that it can't figure out where else it goes right. and it's just gonna shove it into that Slot. Oh, so there's nothing else to set up here. It's right. just going to take it directly. Okay. Yeah. We're essentially done with the, the minimum things we need to set up. Oh, really? For our interaction model. Okay. So what do I do next? Now you save the model mm -hmm. and then build it, which is right next to the save button. Or maybe not. Oh, right. We forgot oh, to fill in the sample, sample utterance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is just weirdness and I don't know why it is, but we have to put an example within the, the variable. Like so number or string. Or hello world or whatever. And then a pipe and... Content? Yes. And then in format. In format. Yeah. Oh. So that should work. Okay. Can I, can I make another one? Go for it. Go nuts. Send. <laughs> No, really, like the, so we're not actually saying all of the possible iterations. We're just uh, helping out. Giving it an idea. Yeah. And then it figures out the rest from there. Number, content, text, that's probably enough for now. So save it and build it? Yeah. All right, save and there we go. It's building. Building. Sweet. Bob, I brought in something to test the UART. Okay. One of my favorite classic computers. Awesome. TRS-80 Model 100. Got an RS-232 port on it, and I've built in an FTDI adapter. Ooh, that's so, like the Wi-Fi of 30 years ago. Yeah, so we can use this as a simple uh, endpoint UART test. Okay, I'm gonna go into my terminal program that I wrote in basic. <laughs> uh, what baud rate? Let's do 9600. Okay, I'm gonna go into ASCII mode, so I should be able to send and receive things from your Raspberry Pi. Yeah, so I will try sending you something. So okay. I'll just do... Send me a secret message. Echo, oops, hello, Ben, and I will pipe that to dev TTY USB. So hardcore. And... Hello, yeah, there ben. it is. Neat. Right. Okay. Now I will run Minicom. So you can receive messages back from me. Yeah. Minicom is a serial terminal program on Linux. And then we'll make sure that we're looking up. So it's 11. Or, or you can change your baud rate there. Yeah, so let's set it to 9600. Yep. Mm. Mm. There you go. I'm sorry, Dave, I can't do that. But you just did something. Okay, cool. So we know that we can send and receive messages from the Raspberry Pi to a serial device. At the moment, this is representing the endpoint device we'll eventually have. So this would be, you know, your test rig, your pinball machine, little, you know, microcontroller gizmo. It's being represented by this because it's really easy for us to see, oh look, there's the data. So it's just a, acting as a dummy terminal serial endpoint. Right. Cool. All right, so now we need to talk about setting up the web server on the Raspberry Pi. Yes. All right, uh, yeah, show us what needs to be done, or at least tell us what you did. Sure. In so, what order. 
We installed Apache. Okay. And we installed PHP. Right. And then we set it up to do SSL. All right. So those things aren't included with the Raspberry Pi. You had to put them on them your, on it yourself. Yes. Okay. And it's pretty easy. You just go into the package manager and install software and look for Apache and PHP, and then that's it. So when you boot up the Pi, it will basically immediately start serving web pages? Yes. On port 80? Well, port 80 is for HTTP, but port 443 is used for HTTPS. Does that mean we have to set up port forwarding on the router? That's correct. Okay. So the out sense. Uh, what's happening is Alexa is going to be talking to our server. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to make inbound connections. And most routers are not configured to allow that just right. because of security purposes. Mm -hmm. So we need to configure the router so that it can allow that to come in. We also have to forward that port so that it will go to this particular Pi rather than any other machine uh, within our router. Okay, so it's kind of like setting up a VPN in a way. We have to set up a, a way through our router. Right, so all we have to do is set the router to forward every request going into port 443 okay. to go to the internal IP address of our Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we start with is we have this uh, web service, which is running in PHP. OK. And uh, we've got it up right here. So, so the way that this is working is uh, we're, we've got the send intent. Mm -hmm. And we're going to uh, pull out the slot values for the content that we're going to send. The and parameters. The right. And then we're going to call Python and use Python to send that, the things that we're requesting. So Python will be the thing actually acting on the Raspberry Pi that communicates with our serial ports. Yes. Wow, that's a lot of tunnels to go through. It's like, it boom, is. boom, 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 boom. Right, but the Amazon Web Services can't talk directly to hardware. I understand. The PHP can't talk directly to hardware. Right, so it's, so, it's like a bucket brigade. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So we call the Python script which, with those parameters. So in our Python script, we open up a serial port, we parse the, the command line parameters that were sent to it, right. and we know that send is one that we just sent. Right. And so we pass the other arguments to our send command function. I noticed in the JSON back on my developer portal that the when we were doing like 255 in binary, mm -hmm. the text just said 255, so we're going to have to parse that ASCII into a number. Right. So for example, if we say 0, then 0 comes across. Yep. If you say 1, 1 comes across. If right. you say 2, it doesn't do TWO, it just does TO. So when we do hex, you have to kind of account for that. So four, for example, is another one. It's not F-O-U-R, it's just F-O-R. Oh, darn English language. Yeah, English is a pain. Yeah. So anyway, what this is going to do is take our hex. Like if we were to say send something in hex, then yeah. you would take that number and convert it and send that character using the serial write command. Oh, OK. And it's just going to send? That one character. All right. Got it. Uh, the other thing is if it's not, if the encoding that we sent isn't hex, like yep. if we said in text or ASCII, then it would just write whatever that is. So basically it, what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, so the format is hex, and so this is how we're going to parse the content. Right. We're parsing the content based off the format, which yeah. is why we have to specify what it is. Yes. Okay. So in theory, we should be able to ask the device if we can send hello in text and it would go through our PHP script, then through the Python script, then through the serial to this device. So then we should be able to say, uh, Alexa, ask serial to send hello in ASCII. Sent. There it is. Oh, man. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Alexa, ask serial to send sloths in ASCII. Sent. Sloths. Yeah, I did it. Awesome. Cool. So now we can send a command from to Alexa that then goes to our Pi and then through PHP to Python to Serial to this thing. Yes. But this thing will be replaced by a device or a microcontroller of some kind. Yeah, like maybe a pinball machine. Alexa, ask pinball to coil 10. Hey, look at that. Alexa, ask Pinball to coil 11. Coil 11 activated. Alexa, ask Pinball to coil 16. Coil 16 activated. Uh, I guess you could manually load a ball. Alexa, ask Pinball to coil 19. Coil 19 activated. Alexa, ask Pinball to coil 11. 
Coil 11 activated. Alexa, ask Pinball to repeat. Coil 11 activated. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. That's all we have for today's episode. To recap, we set up an Alexa skill allowing her to talk to a web server on one of our Raspberry Pis. That web server could command a Python script to send information down a USB port to a pinball machine, but it could really be used with any UART device, such as a microcontroller or other such small device. So that's pretty cool. It really got my brain thinking, what else could we automate in the future? Yeah, in a future episode, we're going to take the stuff that we learned and apply it to reading the value from a multimeter mm. or communicating with an oscilloscope to control it or capture a screenshot. Nice. Or talking over GPIO to the Pi to get it to toggle a bit or do whatever. And then we can also control individual outlets so we can turn on and off your smoke absorber and power supply and soldering right. iron and lamp and we're gonna automate your entire workbench. That sounds really cool. Do you have an Amazon Alexa or Google voice activated device? Have you used them to automate your home or office or shop? Let us know on the Element 14 community. We can also go to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time in the future of automation. I'm sorry, I just have to. I just met you, and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me maybe. I'm John Hamm. All right, you're gonna go to sleep for a thousand years. Wake up. All right, you're gonna tell me now who the murderer is? Alexa, ask Serial to send Cash Me Outside in ASCII. Sent. How about okay. that? <laughs> you know, Billy Joel has a daughter named Alexa, so if he has an Alexa, it's probably really confusing. You're like, Alexa, call Alexa. And like, smoke comes out of it. I guess you're right. Maybe he uses a different trigger word, like echo or computer. Welcome back, Bob Badley, who helped us in a previous episode to get the Amazon Alexa up and running, talking to a microcontroller over a USB cable. But now that we've done that, we should just automate everything in the shop. Alexa, get reading from meter. Alexa, turn on the smoke sucker. So how about a skill called GERT? It looks so automated. I feel just like Tony Stark. <laughs>